In a recent interview, Senior Quest designer Philip Weber answered 25 questions sent by the Russian community. He discussed things like a bounty system that will be used to prevent players from going a full berserk, a comprehensive photo mode, how weather will affect Night City, including the confirmation of acid rain, a few more details about vehicles and much much more brand new Cyberpunk 2077 information. As of the moment of recording, the developer interview was still unlisted on the official Cyberpunk 2077 YouTube channel and it had under 5,000 views, so I'm assuming a lot of people are not aware about this interview. As usual, you can find all the relevant information linked on this video description. Here I will do my best to sum up the most important information about this Q&A session and give my personal opinion about some of them. When asked about uh, the player interaction with food and drinks, Philip said that Cyberpunk 2077 will not be a survival game, so you don't have to eat and drink in regular intervals. However, you will be able to go to bars to do those activities whenever you want. As we already know, some constables will have buffing effects on your character as well. It was also mentioned that uh, we can consume alcohol and some other illegal substance if we want to. He mentioned an example of Johnny Silverhand unique drink that from what I remember has something to do with the Afterlight nightclub. Many of the questions were related to the roleplay aspect of the game and the dev made it clear in multiple answers that the game is a core RPG. However, they didn't want to be an RPG game where you can also shoot at people. Instead, they wanted the FPS aspect of the game to be just right and feel good enough when compared to a AAA shooter game. In a previous interview, Dev said that Cyberpunk 2077 is even more RPG than The Witcher 3. When asked if the player choices will resemble the ones of that game, the answer was that they always want to have our choices to be very important and impactful and that is also important that we don't clearly know the outcome of them. Just like on Witcher 3, they don't want the choices to be clearly labeled as good or as bad, and you have to use your brain to figure out the way you want to act. Some action that could appear to be good at that moment would often spiral into some pretty terrible consequences. Still about the story, when asked about the linearity of it, he said that the game is really non-linear. There are main story missions that you have to do in a certain order, but most of the game will be very open. There will be huge sections of the game that you'll never see on your first playthrough because the decisions that you make will completely block those storylines. Regarding good and bad choices and role-playing, he said that you can play as both as bad or as a good guy or anything in between. You can kill pretty much whoever and whenever you want, but you won't be able to completely ruin the game. You can shoot people on the street, blow up cars and destroy some environments though, but he also said that you'll be able to complete the game without killing anyone and there's a plenty of smart, diplomatic ways to go through the game. However, you cannot be a saint. V is a mercenary and he will often have to deal with the world in a violent way. You can use non-lethal weapons or stealth, but some tasks won't just solve themselves by diplomacy and smooth talking. Before we move on to the rest of the interview, I need to ask you for your support. We have less than 3 months until the release of Cyberpunk 2077 and my hype is on the roof. So here's an idea, why don't you let me keep giving you daily boosts of hype by subscribing to my channel. Alright, I think we got a deal, right? Smash that subscribe button right now. Alright, let's move on. An interesting feature that apparently will be important to the game is that the NCPD will issue bounties for dangerous individuals. We sort of knew this already from the last Night City Wire episode. They say that there will be those super augmented cyber psychos that will have bounties on their heads. However, in the latest interview, we also learned that this will work both ways. If you misbehave too much, the NCPD will put a bounty on your head and pretty much everyone on the city will hunt you down. Talking about cyberpsychosis, the dev said one more time that you won't be able to become a full cyborg. You will have plenty of ways to augment yourself, but this story is not about becoming this immortal killing machine. He also pointed out that many of Cyberpunk 2077's cyberware is not only about making you stronger, but instead is a matter of fashion, just like having an iPhone, for example. 
On our question about character customization, he said that he won't stop on the character creation panel. After you enter the game, you can change how your character looks in a comprehensive way. He addressed a topic that I was personally worried about, that is clothing. He said that they don't want to force you to use a specific style of clothing just because it has high stats. He gave an example that they don't force you to use a specific jacket just because it gives you 50 more armor. What they will do instead is give in clothing slots that you can modify to fit your playstyle. By the way, style will be important and since this game will be mostly exclusive in the first person perspective, they want to offer a really deep photo mode, where you can put your character into different cool scenes and positions and go crazy with those futuristic Instagram posts. I wonder how many people will take photos of their food instead of eating them, for Christ's sake. Still regarding character customizations, they said one more time that you will be able to respec your skill points throughout the game. They want us to be able to experiment different playstyles without having to commit skill points forever. Regarding city population density, he said that weather will have an impact on how many people are on the street as well as day-night cycle. Different areas of the city will have nightlife, while others will be packed with people during business hours. Philip also mentioned that throughout the game there will be special story events that will cause huge crowds. I hope we can experience the Arasaka riots that were led by Johnny Silverhand back in the 20s, maybe via brain dance or some flashback. Uh, talking about weather, he confirmed that we will have dynamic weather cycles that will include sunshine, fog, rain, big storms and even acid rain. He did not mention if those environmental effects will have any role on gameplay or they are there for pure aesthetics though. Moving on, we have some new information about transport and vehicles. As we all know, we will not be able to drive flying vehicles but we will use them at multiple times in the, in the story. The reason behind this is probably not to create a development nightmare trying to predict every possible bug related to players reaching otherwise unreachable places on the map. As for normal vehicles, you can buy multiple cars and even win some unique vehicle as rewards for completing certain quests. There will also be utility vehicles and he gave the example of the Delaman company who provides AI driven taxis. This is the taxi that we saw on the 2019 E3 cinematic trailer on the tragic scene where Jackie dies. And about Jackie and another sidekicks, when asked how many of them are on the game, Philip said that there are quite few people that you can know and play different quests with. He said that most of them are yet to be seen, and he looked up especially excited for people to meet them when the game launches. He went on saying that those special NPCs can be either allied, neutral or even become your enemies depending on your actions. Moving on regarding V alliances with gangs and corpus, he said that you cannot join any gang or corporation, however you will be able to have them as allies or enemies, depending on how you interact with the complex network of competing forces in Night City, this will have a direct impact on the story throughout the game. The complete video for this interview is over 22 minutes long, but these were the topics I considered to be most important. The link for the whole interview and as well the whole transcript of it can be found on this video description. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for your daily doses of Cyberpunk 2077, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and I see you next time.